All right. Good afternoon. Appreciate y'all being here. Um, I'll be quick, and then y'all y'all ask questions. So this is our fifth practice. Um, really, third practice we've had with contact, and we're making progress. You know, there's there was some ebb and flow to practice today, um, and really that's the way the last two days have been. First day in pads on Friday, defense really was one that won the day soundly, um, and there's been some give and take the last two days, um, and that's what you want. We uh, y'all were in there. We had some nonsense during the inside period drill, and you know that's, some of it's just part of it. Um, but um, that's kind of when you're in the middle of spring practice or fall camp, that stuff happens sometimes. But um, but I, but I like this group, fun group to coach. Um, spring is is the whole idea of spring practice is prepare you for fall camp and trying to figure out you know as much from a a scheme standpoint is you change year to year, year to year, and we're we're trying some new things on on both sides, and then you're trying to identify the personnel, you know what's the best position for them, and then what do we do well with the with those with those guys, and so that's kind of what where we're at. We'll go just so you know, we're going Saturday, uh, we're going to go in the stadium. It's 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 family day, so a lot of our uh, players' families will be here. Uh, we'll do some eleven on eleven work. Um, and, but it won't be a full scrimmage. And then we'll come back and we go uh, three days next week. And so that's kind of the schedule for us. And with that, I'll take questions. So, you know, we just talked to Matt and inch it on, but start with, with offensive line. Um, your, your analysis, I mean, you lost good players, but what have you seen out of this group? Can you always talk about how that was the best part of last year's team? Mm -hmm. Can it remain that way? Well, I think it needs to if we're going to continue to have success. I think there's uh, – um, you know, you always start from scratch every time. So in January, we started new on, on the 24 team. And, um, you know, life without Zach Frazier. And, and we're going to miss Doug Nestor, too, because Doug Nestor was really the vocal leader in that room. And that Zach Frazier um, was was a great player, not a good player, but a great player. And uh, we're going to miss, miss both of those guys. And so I think sometimes the assumption is, you know, from a player standpoint, and maybe coaches to a lesser degree, but you just lose people and you keep rolling. Well, that's the expectation, but there's a lot that goes into that. And, um, you know, on Friday, really our D-line really handed it to our offensive line. They really got after them. And I think part of the reason behind that is in the interior part of our D-line, especially like Hammond Russell, Fatorma, um, those guys had, and Eddie V had great days. And, and part of that is is because they've been going against Zach Frazier day in and day out, and they lost more than they won, you know. And so this was first day post him in full pads, and, and they were ready to return the favor. Um, and so I think that was a great wake-up call for our offensive line is, is, hey, like even though our expectation is we're going to continue to do this, is we, we, are, we fully expect to be one of the top rushing offenses in the country. We, we fully expect to – to have few tackles for loss and be one of the leaders in sacks allowed. But there's a lot of work that goes into that. And that was a good wake-up call. And, and offensive line-wise, have competed and performed at a much, much higher level um, in Tuesday's practice and then today. Um, but we've got, some, we, we've got some work to do. But I'll tell you, so we missed Tomas. Tomas is going to miss spring. I said that. And uh, so Sully Weedman and Mo Hamilton are getting some more reps. And it's time for them. You know, this is this is their spring to to show that they're ready. Um, really pleased with the progress of Johnny Williams and and Nick Cray and uh, Xavier Bosley. I think Nick Malone has has taken a a step. He's had really he was good on Friday when the rest of them weren't very good. Um, and then Wyatt, the the pressure on Wyatt is is to step in and and be the the leader that Zach was because now he's the best player in that room. And and he's ready for that. He's he's trying to figure it out. You know, he's uh, um, it's a new world for him because you know even in high school he had Doug there and and so now he he's he's figuring it out. I'm excited about the opportunity for him to lead. Um, but yeah, we've got some work to do. But but I'm pleased with the progress that that we're making. Is there anything you guys need? After this, you know, in the summer. Talk about personnel wise. Yeah, yeah I think Ken, if you if you'll ask me closer to it, I'll be able to give you a clear answer. You know, I think that um, a lot of it depends on how we how we develop. You know, like at tight end, well, some of those young guys 
show that they're ready to play. Because if they don't, then we're probably okay. If they do, then we're probably okay. If they don't, then we probably need to go find one. Um, you know, can the interior part of our offensive line, can they continue to progress those young guys? And if they can, then then I think that, that shows that we're ready for the fall. If not, then we'll need. And then, you know, I think um, – same, I would say, for safeties. You know, we've got a couple of red shirt freshmen in the back there, and if they show that they're ready to play, then okay, then I think we're in good shape. If not, and, and maybe it's just not that they're not ready ever, they're just not ready this fall, you know, and sometimes that's the case. Um, but I'll have a really a better answer for you. We probably get in that 12, 13, 14 practice range. Curious, we were talking to Shadon, and he says you're the no guy. Um, there may be a good player or something that they want and you kind of evaluate the whole thing, look at their background and say, I don't think that's going to work for us. Where did that come from? Was that a hard lesson you learned uh, along the way or by saying, well, okay, just because this guy's a good player, it doesn't necessarily mean he fits what we want to do. Well, I just think there's some biases in, in general, whether, um, you know, sometimes as position coaches, and, and this isn't bad, um, or as a coordinator, you're looking at one specific area. Um, and as a coordinator, you're looking at one side of the ball and you're not always seeing the big picture. And then so when you're just seeing it through a real narrow point of view, you know, that part of it is the most important. Um, and then, you know, whoever's recruiting them, whether the position coach or the area coach is always going to be really close with that individual. And there's going to be some bias there, you know, and, and there should be, you know, when you have a relationship, you know, they're no different than a parent with a kid. You're going to have some inherent bias there. Um, and so, you know, as the person that has to have a 30,000 foot view of it is you got to be able, you got to be able to make some decisions. And, and, and here's the thing. Some of those decisions you're going to be right on and some of those decisions you're going to be wrong on. Um, but what we've done is, is through you know some trial and error and some making some some poor decisions and is we've got a process that you know we really felt like this over probably the last two years where from um you know if you look at character you look at academics and you look at athletics and there's some there's some um really non-talent things from an athletic perspective that we look at that you know those have been good evaluation tools for us and and you got to be okay you know, and this is – if we do our process, we go through our evaluation, evaluation process, then you've got to be okay if that player goes somewhere else. And you've got to be okay if they're successful because, again, you've got you to believe in the processes you're using. The impression I got was is a character and talent. Character is pretty high in your estimation. You'll take a lesser talented guy if it's not going to blow up. You know, he's going to enhance the locker room. Yeah, I think that – I look at it from an each room perspective, you know, and like um, there's going to be some risk involved in in some players, but you don't want to have too much risk in a room. It's no different than if you got a financial portfolio, you know, some risk is good because there's big rewards with those re risks, right? But you don't want your whole portfolio to be all risk, you know what I mean? Like, so it's the same when you're looking at a position room is you want to make sure that you've got all right. The other thing that you look at too is okay. If you if you're taking a player with risk, do you have some really good leadership, or you do have some really good guys that are going to be in that room that he'll fall in line behind? And so the other thing that we look at is like some some youth to some veterans. You want that in the room. Um, but yeah, I think for us, like what we really some things like and, and just to, to dive in on this a little bit is from a character standpoint. You know, there's there's your personal character, then there's your football character. And like from a football character standpoint, like I think that how we how we've established that we're gonna play, it, it's really, really important for guys to to strain and to be tough people. And if if they show that on tape, okay, and it's and the talent's similar, when well, we're gonna take those tough people first. Um and and that's that, you know that's kind of how it works. Where does the character and culture make a difference? Yeah, I think there's there's a lot of it that makes a difference. You know, I think that um, in the portal era, era, I'm not sure that you know outside of maybe the top eight to ten teams, and I, and that may even be a little high. 
I'm not sure there's just this huge uh, talent um, discrepancy. You know, a lot of a lot of teams. You look at our league. Um, I'm not sure there's a big talent. There is a little bit, but I'm not sure there's this significant talent difference. One through, um, what do we have 16 now. So one through 16. Um, you know, so those intangibles really matter. You know, and, and the way they show up is they show up kind of in the dark when you're in your winter and your summer. And they show up in, like, the standards of your program and it goes to, like, you know, what are you allowing? And so if you can do that, you can you get guys that are about the right things and they have integrity, you know, they have um, – discipline, accountability, those type of character traits. And then on the football side, if, if, they, if, they, if it means something to them and they're smart as far as, like, understanding the game, they're tough, they strain, then, you know, if you get, a, if you get the majority of your team that way, then you got a chance, you know, because those things are really going to make the difference, especially in the amount of close games that we play. Showed up the Baylor game. Yeah, yeah, no, no, it, it shows up a lot, you know, like, um, and I think the other thing that we've really is when you get live evaluations, it's important because you see live talent, like how do they, can they bend, you know, do they use your hands, things like that, but you also can tell, like, how do they take coaching? You know, when somebody is correcting them, are they hungry, hungry for that correction? Do they look that coach in the eye? Um, are they a BCDE guy? Are they a blame, complain, defend, excuse? You know, are they a palms up? Like, and so when you get live evaluations, like you can really tell, and those are some things that we talk about in our staff room is like these are the tri these are the type of players that we want. These are the type of players that will get our ass beat. You know, and so um, that's kind of that's kind of where we're at on it. You know, last year you had a great hit rate on your transfers. So the vast majority of them were, were impact players. It's very early, I understand. Mm -hmm. Do you think you're going to get that kind of hit rate out of this? Yeah, well, I don't think you're ever going to hit 100, you know, just because the, it's, so, it's so fast. Um, I do really trust that the process that we go through, you know, in our scouting department. Um, and, and they do a good job, you know, kind of – measuring the football and the character piece too. Uh, so I really, I do believe in, in, in the process we have there and, and the people we have in that scouting department. Um, but I think that you're never, you're, you're never gonna hit a 100. We didn't hit a 100 last year. Now we, we, we had a high majority of hits and guys that really helped us. Um, and not only helped us, but helped the culture of our football team too. Um, and like, um, you know, offensively, just talking a little bit here, like Jaden Bray, we talked about him, you know, great cultural fit. He's got really good talent. He needs some experience. He's a little bit raw, um, but I like the way he plays. Xavier Balls is really hungry. It's a step up in competition, you know. So it's there's some there's a learning curve there, um, but he's working at a high level, and it's important to him. Um, if you click it over on defense, um, Reed Carico is a guy that, um, you know, he's. Uh, I think I would use that that hungry word again. Extremely smart football player. Um, you know, he's he's worked at a high level, done a great job, not only linebacker, but special teams. You know, he understands the importance of that. That was a role he, he filled at Ohio State. Um, both no, no, Northwestern transfers, they've played a lot of football. Um, you know, Garnett, I think, is a, is a guy that, you know, I think he's going to be an NFL player. And um, Joseph is around the ball a lot, and they're both real students of the game. They're in this building a lot. And, and I think that's something that's – that is, you know, it manifests itself, right? People that, that really love football and want to get better, you know, they find themselves in this building a lot, and it, you can tell those guys are. Um, Aiden Garns is going to – he's going to surprise people. You know, he really jumped out to us when we played him last year, and he can run. Like he, he can run stride for stride with, with EJ, who's, who's as fast as anybody we're going to play. Um, and he's always around the ball. He, he's uh, he's had multiple picks. He had two for a touchdown on Friday. Um, I like the way he plays. He's really smart. He can play a bunch of different positions. Um, anybody else that you wanted to know about? You have a mix 
types there of guys moving up from FCS. You've had mm -hmm. group of five, you've had power five. Do you, are, are you more confident with one level than another, or how do you evaluate that when you're looking, especially a guy coming, mm -hmm. trying to move up? Yeah, Crandall's out right now with a hamstring too. Um, no, I, I think that you try to evaluate the talent. Like if you're looking at FCS player, you want him, you want him to be dominant at that le level. Um, yeah, I think the the from a size characteristic standpoint, like we've got pretty good. Not that we won't come off those some, um, but from a from a traits you know physical traits standpoint, um, you know. As long as they meet those physical traits and they're, and they're highly, we want productive players. You know, it's either pr production or potential, right? And so, you know, you want more product. You'd love for them to have both, right? But you know, when you get a, an older kid, you you want production. You know, when you're going on a little bit younger guy, then you're okay with some, you know, potential if you feel like you can close the gap and get it out of them. Um, but no, we're we're. We're just looking for best available. And then sometimes, you know, when you get in the portal, like, you know, everybody's not going to be a starter, and that's okay. You know, but I think you have to set reasonable expectations coming in where they know, right? Because what you don't want is you don't want a disgruntled player. You, you sell them something in recruiting when they come here, it's not what it is. You know, so we've tried to be, you know, tell them the story of, hey, this is kind of what we're looking for. Now, if, if you're better, you're better. If not, best case, worst case scenario. You know, and that's what I try to tell, like, because that's the way I look at things. Like, here's the best case that can happen, here's the worst case scenario. Um, and then they've got to make their decision based on that. Um, but regardless of level, you know, we want either highly productive players or guys with high potential. Knowing this is practice five, is there an aspect of your team or something that's performing or functioning well now better than maybe it was last year that you can think of right off. Yeah, well, I think just from a just from an overall practice standpoint, I think our preparation from a year ago, like spring a year ago, I'm not saying it's like it's it's as good as it was during the season last year, but like our preparation, like just getting ready for practice mentally and physically, um, is much improved from where it was last spring. Um, the other thing too is I think the energy level in our practices is much higher. Um, and I think that's a byproduct of we've got some new coaches, um, but also we've got, um, you know, we've we've been real intentional about um, recruiting guys that have energy, you know, that have um, that smile a lot and people like being around them and they're just kind of upbeat, positive people. And so I think from just our energy and practice is it's much improved. Um, and, and I think defensively the thing that um, even, and this is, this is probably even towards the end of last year that we're ahead of, is just the, uh, we're a much more physical football team. You know, and I think that has to do with some of the players that we brought in on the back end. And then we have real depth at linebacker for the first time in a long time. And so um, the physicalness in our, in our D-line is those guys are really coming along. And so we're much more physical on defense than we were even probably at the end of last season. It's encouraging you're mentioning a lot of areas. Yeah. That's encouraging. Yeah, yeah. And like I said, we've got to go out and do it. Yeah. You know, but for me is like we're starting to look and it feels like like it should be when you're having, you know, in the spring practice. Neil, a, a group we haven't talked about this spring, your specialists, you got them both back just to yeah. – how do those guys take a, a, the next step? Yeah, well, I think competition is a big piece of that, you know, and, and, Mike, and Mike's been out a little bit with a um, little bit of a growing injury. And, and RJ came in there, and I don't know if you all were in there at the time, but he, he nailed – uh, I think a 46 or 47 yarder right there in front of the whole team today. Um, so he's really, he's really, we're gaining some confidence in him. That was a huge kick for him. And Mike's been out since Friday. So RJ's had three days in a row where, you know, we didn't skip a beat and he's, he's really kicked it. Um, Ollie coming off surgery, did a great job rehabbing. He, uh, you wouldn't even know that he had to have a little off season surgery. So um, 
I think he'll continue. I think what you're going to see him is add some distance because he's got stronger. You're going to see he's always done a great job of his location. That's what makes him unique, but he's going to add some distance to the kick. And then I think Brinkman's as good as his job as, as any player in the country. I, I do. I don't, I don't think there's a better long snapper in the country than him. How about, I guess, returner too? Yeah, so Preston, man, is, um, you know, if you look, like he was um, – he was one of the best ones in the country last year at punt return. And he's got a natural feel for it. And he's been – you talk about somebody that's made a big step and, and somebody that's even toward the end of their career has gotten a lot faster. So on the GPS, you know, when he came here, he was an 18 to 19 miles per hour guy. And now every single practice of spring, he's been over 20. You know, so like um, – he is running much better. He's stronger, which I think go hand in hand. Um, but yeah, and then at kickoff return, we're going to have kind of an open competition. Hadn't gotten into it much other than some field and some kicks, but um, we need to improve there. Okay, anything else for Coach? All right, thank you. All right, thank you all.